Today we're checking out the Z370 Aorus Gaming 3 motherboard as well as a fix for the fairly hot VRM temperatures that we're seeing coming from some of these Aorus boards when overclocking. Firstly, let's check out the Aorus Gaming 3 motherboard which I'd consider a fairly mid-range board when looking at the Z370 Aorus lineup. Unfortunately, I don't have any US pricing on me at the moment as this is a fairly new board but I do expect it to be in the ballpark between 120 and 150 US dollars and I will have that confirmed for you guys at a later date. As you guys probably already know, this is a Z370 motherboard to work with Intel's Coffee Lake processors, so it does support overclocking, which we'll check out in just a little bit. The design of the board is pretty solid in my opinion. It's mostly that stealthy black that we all appreciate, but we do also have some red accents on the VRM heatsinks, RAM DIMMs 2 and 4, and also on the two main PCI Express slots. It's fairly tasteful though, and it does add a nice touch to the board's overall design, especially since we're not getting a ton of RGB on this board, only on the chipset heatsink on the bottom right. An IO shroud is definitely appreciated, although at this price point it is just plastic, it does help to give that premium look. Along with the chipset heatsink, which has a very similar design to what we saw in the Ultra Gaming Board with that triangulated pattern. We're not getting support for NVIDIA's SLI, but we are getting AMD Crossfire support for up to a two-way configuration on the PCI Express 3.0 slots here, which by the way are reinforced for some extra support. For USB ports, we're getting two 2.0 ports, four 3.1 Gen 1 ports, which is great, and also two 3.1 Gen 2 ports with one of those being Type-C. We're also getting a front panel connector for Type-C on this board as well, which is also pretty great if that's something that your case offers. And in terms of M.2 slots, we're getting two here, which should be more than enough for most people, up to 22.110 on the top slot and 22.80 on the bottom. Six SATA ports are there as well for those sticking to more traditional storage, with four of those at a right angle to the board, which is personally the more desirable option for me, but two more are located at the bottom as well if you need those. Now, in terms of overclocking, this board is pretty much the same as the Ultra Gaming board that I reviewed and tested a few weeks ago. We're getting a 4 plus 3 phase VRM layout, and yes, the VRMs did run pretty toasty here. So with the 8600K pushed to 5 gigahertz and 1.35 volts, we're seeing VRM temps above 100 degrees in intensive CPU workloads. In gaming though, there was no problem at all and temperature wise this board was running absolutely fine there even with the overclock in place and i know these hot vrms can be really alarming to you guys but let's be honest how many of you are actually doing video encoding 3d rendering and other cpu intensive loads it's probably not a lot most of you are probably just interested in a solid gaming board that can do a little bit of overclocking and that's it and as both this board and the ultra gaming board stand they do that quite well for the rest of you though who do want to run intensive cpu loads along with an overclocked processor i'm going to show you a quick and easy fix that i know of and this will work for the ultra gaming gaming 5 and gaming 7 boards as well Full credit though goes to Reddit user Doggo7591 who first shared this fix online. I'll link that discussion thread in the description below but the basic idea here is that the VRM heatsinks are just not making a tight enough contact to the MOSFETs underneath and this results in very poor thermal conductivity. Before we proceed, do note that you'll most likely be voiding your warranty here and I am not liable for any damage at all that you inflict on your board. So, as the boards ship right now, the washer between the heatsink and the motherboard actually restricts the tightening between the heatsink and the MOSFETs, which means that the thermal pad underneath the heatsink does not fully encapsulate the MOSFETs like they should, but only lightly presses onto them. This is fairly evident when looking at the very shallow imprint that the MOSFETs actually make on the thermal pads. They definitely should be a little bit deeper than this. Also, the thermal pads themselves are quite thin, and even just replacing these thin pads with something a little bit more more substantial should help improve the temperatures. The other solution is basically to get rid of this spacer, so you can tighten the heatsink down a little bit more and allow for a tighter fit and better thermal conductivity. On the Ultra Gaming, Gaming 5 and Gaming 7 boards, this spacer is separate from the heatsink itself, so it can easily be removed, but on the Gaming 3 board, you actually have to be a little bit more creative and actually cut it away with a razor. It is worth it though, because once the spacer is removed, the heatsink and the thermal pad should sit a lot tighter against the MOSFETs. And for the Gaming 3 board, this dropped the temperatures significantly from 120 degrees C down to the mid 80s. I haven't tested this on the other Z370 Aorus boards though, but I highly encourage you guys to try this out if you do own one of those and you do want it to run a little bit cooler. 
It does suck that we have to mod these boards to get to that normal temperature range for these VRMs, but at the end of the day, if this is a board that you really want and you plan on running CPU intensive workloads, then it really is in your best interest to do. As I said before though, for gaming, these boards are absolutely fine and the VRMs aren't going to be under a lot of stress there anyway. So as always guys, I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section below, especially if you've got one of these boards and plan on doing the mod yourself. Don't forget to drop a like on the video if you enjoyed guys, and as always, I will see you all in the next one.